Welcome everyone to this um, fortnightly session, um, which is for working with uh, tools for people who are working with residents who are struggling. Um, so we've got two presenters today. We've got Joe Hunt, who's here from Volunteer Centre Hackney, and then uh, Molly is here from Groundwork. Um, so we've got two presentations and then plenty of time for questions. So uh, I am going to share my screen and uh, hand over to Joe. Let me just Hi, get everyone. my screen ready. Thanks, John, for having me along today to present. Appreciate that. No problem. Wonderful. So, uh, as John said, I'm Go Hunt. I manage the uh, Public Health Community Champions Program over at uh, Volunteer Centre Hackney. Um, so, if you go to the next slide, please. So I thought I'd start off with the key program aims. Um, so in a nutshell, uh, the overarching sort of aim is to improve uh, health outcomes for diverse underrepresented communities across City and Hackney, uh, which will in turn, uh, the aim is to reduce health inequalities. So delving into that a bit deeper. So public health community champions, um, what they do is they share key credible accurate, timely and accessible health messages. Um, that might be health information, about health services or referral pathways into those services. Um, and they do this across their professional and sometimes social networks. The idea is that um, this is, it increases resident awareness knowledge understanding and access to that information and services and the reason we break it down the awareness knowledge understanding is because there are various obstacles that can present themselves at each of those stages so so we we, we sort of focus on each of those stages in turn when we're supporting residents so all of that empowers residents then to make informed and positive health choices the next thing, um, champions, um, don't, we don't just send out information, uh, it's kind of works on a loop. They then report back to us uh, and share local insights um, from their communities uh, with programme partners. Um, so that might be about resident health attitudes, beliefs, behaviours, and some of the many barriers that they may face to engaging with health support. And then that in turn, knowledge of all of that, then in turn um, informs the design and development of those services. So we can deliver um, a more relevant service and health intervention for communities. Next slide, please. So just a little bit about the background. Um, the programme has been jointly designed and delivered um, or it and is currently designed and delivered by Volunteer Centre Hackney in partnership with the City and Hackney Public Health Team. Um, the programme started in August 2020 in direct response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and we, ha we are pleased to say that we have funding for uh, another additional five years um, as from the 1st of October. So that's really good news. Um, the programme is, is supporting now currently a much broader uh, base of health and wellbeing priorities. These uh, priorities are identified by both public health data and by community uh, priorities, which are reported back to us by community champions. So we focus on childhood immunizations, diabetes, hypertension, cancer screening, mental health and wellbeing, and some of the wider determinants of health, such as the cost of living crisis. So I just wanted to add some positivity um, uh, from the COVID-19 crisis, if I may, because it's really enabled us to work in different ways. And I don't know if any of you have experienced this at all, but we've had many like technological leaps. Um, it's enabled more widespread use of WhatsApp and Zoom and other platforms. And there have also been some, importantly, some power shifts, uh, which has given communities autonomy. Um, for example, when developing their own public health messaging. And many public health professionals have also reported a fundamental change in the way that they engage with and integrate 
uh, community priorities into their work. Um, it's also enabled a lot of uh, City and Hackney grassroots organisations to have access to funding, access to training and visibility and influence uh, in decision making and access to grants that they may not otherwise have had, which has resulted in, in some cases, survival and capacity building at the same time. Next slide, please. So what do champions do? So in a nutshell, um, it, they inform and support service users and residents by sharing and increasing access to health messages, addressing specific concerns, drawing on effective conversation and listening skills, the knowledge that they've acquired through the partnerships and the local health and partnership connections, collaborations and events and activities delivered. Some examples um, include translation of, of communications into different community languages or more accessible, easy read uh, versions, making full use of social print, media, videos, text, meetings, etc. Um, they also assist residents to access health services for example, by supporting them to understand and prepare for and book medical appointments. Um, and, it, and they enable access to mental health, emotional, physical support, and help them to overcome um, digital barriers, which is often an issue with many, in terms of signposting into many services. Um, as I mentioned previously, um, champions collaborate with health partners in response to issues and barriers raised by residents so that we can um, design more relevant interventions for those specific communities. Um, champions reassure and inform, this particularly happened within the pandemic, uh, they reassured and informed individuals, uh, for example, with no recourse to public funds, who may, well, they were very wary of potential immigration consequences in accessing the NHS. So champions were instrumental in, in informing them and enabling them to access um, NHS services which they needed. Next slide, please. So how do we, as a programme, support all of this wonderful work that champions are doing? So we source, review and provide an ongoing um, training and support programme um, this focuses on individual health topics, which are often shared by clinicians and, and health professionals. And then we also enable them to develop the skills which they need to communicate those messages and, and to signpost into services. Um, we do this via, we have fortnightly peer support sessions and we have monthly forum events, a bit like this one that um, you're holding today. Um, and events and other activities across the programme. So um, we enable opportunity for collaboration. Um, this has worked really well, both across champion groups and across um, the programme as a whole, in terms of sharing information, sharing knowledge and sharing resources. Um, and champions have really valued being able to sort of uh, in, engage in Q&A with health professionals directly um, and seeking responses which they can take directly to their communities. We also, wherever possible, co-design the programme infrastructure and all the processes and procedures and priorities with champions, such as the health topics which I mentioned earlier, right down to how training is delivered and when it's delivered. We co-design communication assets um, so that they're tailored for specific community needs with champions. And we also set up steering groups. Um, and those are usually um, consisting of champions who focus on specific communities, such as people with learning disabilities. We, as I mentioned previously, enable capacity building. We facilitate access to funding streams for small grassroots VCS organisations and we have just started supporting organisations around due diligence and compliance um, and which then in turn enables organisations to be equipped to apply for other 
uh, external funding streams. Um, so it helps with capacity building. Next slide, please. So this I've included because this is just what we uh, give to champions when we induct them. Um, and it's just like a visual interpretation of the support we provide, uh, the benefits of becoming a community champion, you can see in the middle, and all the various roles that a champion may undertake. Next slide, please. So we have a variety of uh, information and resources for champions. Uh, we have a fortnightly newsletter. We have a communications toolkit, which is constantly updated and includes some of the latest resources and communications assets, which champions can then share with their communities. Um, it caters for a, a variety of access requirements, such as languages and formats and for different communication channels as well. We also have a WhatsApp broadcast uh, message, um, which includes information on the latest government health campaigns, local health information, and NHS campaign videos. We have a designated email address um, for submission of questions, ideas, and insights. And we, we're very proud that we have a guaranteed 48 hour response for any questions raised. Um, on our VCH website, we host a lot of most of this information and resources, and this is accessible to anybody. So I've included the link here and feel free to have a look in your own time. Next slide, please. So I've just summarized here uh, the program ethos. And I wanted to mention this thing called trust. And some, sometimes we can't rush things. We have to be, we can't emphasize enough the importance of building up that trust uh, over time with, you know, with individuals, with communities and listening to their perspectives. Uh, so we're focusing on that quite a lot in the program through our support mechanisms, et cetera. Um, we ensure that the champion role fits with the individual champion and the organization in which they're hosted and of course resident champions as well because we appreciate that people have lots of other things going on as well um, so we support champions to make the program work for them um, we ensure opportunities for collaboration are embedded and co-design are embedded across the program next slide please so who are champions they're local people living, working, volunteering or studying or a combination of those within the city in Hackney. Um, so they're supporting local communities, often communities that they represent themselves uh, towards positive um, health and wellbeing outcomes. Um, so again, I'm using that word trusted, they're known and trusted figures with established connections across approximately 26 ethnically diverse communities. And collectively, they have a knowledge of around 24 different languages. And the common denominator is that they support often marginalized and underrepresented groups, and individuals, some of which are relatively hidden to services. So in terms of numbers, we currently have 60 plus uh, City and Hackney VCS organizations hosting VCS. Uh, oh, sorry, hosting champions. Um, there are 250 plus champions uh, in total, and the majority are hosted by organizations, but we have some within statutory and health sector and some independent resident champions as well. Next slide, please. So just uh, outlined here, the main motive, some of the main motivations. I won't read through them individually, but uh, in a nutshell, um, there are various reasons why people become champions. Uh, it might be altruistic reasons, wanting to make a difference. It might be, you know, they want to be more integrated in their community and to help their community. It might be a practical reason, having access to the most up-to-date, uh, credible information. Um, it might be to link up with other organisations within City and Hackney um, and across the health system. And it might be for, for personal development, um, you know, to increase their skills and knowledge base. 
So on the next slide, again, I won't read through these. I've included a couple of testimonials for you to have a look at from uh, different champions across different uh, community groups. And then on the next slide, I've just included a few visuals for you to have a look at. Um, so on the left, we have one of our diabetes outreach events. Uh, this was to raise awareness around issues and effects and signposting route for those at risk of developing diabetes. We also, uh, a few months ago, delivered a healthy lifestyle event where we connected champions up to all of the uh, services uh, within City and Hackney. And the, on the right, that is myself and a colleague presenting at the Hackney Health Summit. So I think the last slide is just a, a picture of our team. So that's me on the left at the top, and that those are my colleagues. And I've included all of our email addresses, uh, contact details, in case you'd like to follow up with any of us following this. So one final slide is my call to action which is, please feel free to extend the opportunity to become a champion um, across your networks. Um, and there is a registration link here. Um, also feel free to call if you have any questions about the role or anything else you'd like to talk to us about. Um, and feel free also to share any information resources and any information about any events that you're holding, because um, we can distribute these across our forums, peer support and, and newsletter. And that is it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Joan. Uh, yeah. that was, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Joe. That was really, really good. Um, does anyone have any questions for Joe about the programme or um, you know, maybe about the specifics of what's involved if you're if you're if you're one of the champions or about any aspects of the slides? Hi, Joe. Hi. Hi, my name is Cicela. I work with long COVID and how do you do an invasion to know whether it's really making an impact with the Sorry, Tislea, I, I missed your so, connection there. Did, could you repeat the question, please? Okay. So um, I want to know how long ago did they start and have you been able to measure whether you're making any significant impact within the community? It seems that you're doing a lot, but um, have you been able to uh, effectively evaluate whether those things you're doing are making any impact at all? That's a good question. We we have, um, and we do, <laughs> um, but it, it hasn't been in sometimes in traditional ways. We, we've grappled okay. with this a lot, and we've talked to other champion programmes across London, actually, and it is a common uh -huh. issue because you can't be too onerous, but at the same time, you need to know what impact you're making. So there are various methods we use. We uh, conducted an external evaluation, which was published in June last year. Um, okay. So I'm, I'm quite happy to uh, circulate that, um, at, you know, along with the information that, with the slides, et cetera. And that tells you all the methodologies that we used. Um, okay. And we continue to use, but we're also going to develop that some more moving forward as well. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you, Joe. I'll definitely be in touch because I think I'm kind of interested in how it works and how, if I can be a volunteer champion. Wonderful. Look forward okay. to hearing from you. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thanks, Tisla. A um, couple of comments in the chat, Joe, from Batia. Um, so one about how can we improve translated leaflets and um Bash's left her email there um for you to get in touch or maybe you can um yeah because you mentioned the translation in in your slides didn't you so maybe yeah mm. how, how does that that tend to work um and is it is it just sort of um not by chance but i mean is it is it a sort of um an added benefit that that people are able to do that translation or do you specifically look for people who can translate it often it's quite nuanced translation because you, you, you can't always yeah. assume that they speak the same language and therefore it's different dialects etc so we champions do get involved in that and 
Um, there are various ways we can do that. I mean, it's quite a specialist skill. So sometimes we can reimburse for, for that kind of input as well. Yeah. Um, but we have found that rather than getting external, champions themselves are the best sort of uh, people to do that. Yeah. Um, Bassa, did you, did you want to come in? Yes. Um, jo, Hi. Um, there's some new leaflets that have been produced, I think, centrally by the NHS that are in the GP surgeries. Um, I must admit, I picked them up and I, I just laugh because um, the Yiddish ones, I don't know about the Hebrew ones, but the Yiddish ones, um, they're not translated. All they are is transliterated. In other words, the English words have been spelt in Yiddish letters. Well, right. that doesn't help because it doesn't mean anything. It's absolutely meaningless to a native Yiddish speaker mm. if you just trans if you just put an English word in Yiddish letters, mm. they'll just scratch their head and throw the leaflet away. And it's an enormous waste of public money. Quite. Um, I have tried as a public health community champion to put input into this for a year or more. I'm getting nowhere. So I'm wondering if you can help me escalate it because obviously it's important. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Bashi, can we talk outside of this? I'd be very interested in helping yes, you please. forward. Yes, please. Email me. Thanks. Great. Uh, John, are you able to share Bashi's email with me? Yes, it's actually in the chat if you're able to access that, um, but I could also forward it on to you. Amazing, thank you. Um, also another question in the chat about translation into French as well. Um, I don't know if that's one of the languages that you, um, that the community champions are able to translate things into or not, Joe. We do have French, a number of French-speaking uh, community champions. Yeah, again, uh, feel free to, to contact me and we can have a chat about it. Is it Latumba and Mimi? Hi. Is it a specific dialect or is it straight French? Oh, I think you're on mute. mute is it straight French? Is it just the language French? Okay, yeah. Please feel free to get in contact with me and we can we can talk through it. Oh thanks. Thank you. Great. Um does anyone else have any questions for Joe? Charlie. Um it's probably it's not a question for Joe, it's a question for the room. I'd be interested to see how many partners on the call were community our community champions are. Because I know that there's a really wide network, so we need to see how many are here today, if there are any. Well, we know we've got one, Batia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is anyone else on the call um, a community champion? I think I think it might just be Batia, but um, it sounds like I mean, it sounds like an amazing opportunity. Um, mm. so, uh, yeah, I will obviously put your put your call to action out in the newsletter, Joe. I, I actually had a question about, I mean, we've kind of actually already maybe seen an example of this today, but I was thinking, do, do you, obviously, you know, it sounds like it's a really, you know, um, powerful way to, to get, you know, messages out there and signpost services, etc. But do you also, do the community champions also feed back to health partners and health services about where things aren't working or where something isn't? isn't quite as um effective as it could be is this, this is the sort of um the feedback loop does it go the other way as well if you see what i mean oh absolutely yeah, yeah all the time um yeah there's, there's many different examples of when that's happened like yeah. hypertension and blood pressure you know there was nothing that all the communications were all disparate in different places so we work very closely with champion groups specific communities to put it all together in one place uh, just it sounds simple, but yeah, yeah. you know it's something that really made a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. Um, unless anyone else has got any other questions, I think we will move on to the next presentation. But um, yeah, thanks again, Joe. That was fantastic, and um, I will send your slides out and the call to action in the newsletter. 
Um, so Evan will be will be getting that. Um, Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Joe. Um, okay, we're going to pass on to Molly now, who is here from Groundwork. So yeah, take it away, Molly. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yep, perfect. Fantastic. Um, yeah, well, I'm Molly from Groundwork London. I've got a presentation. You can see behind me some project stuff, which I was a little bit like, oh, I should meet, you know, blur, blur my background. But then I thought maybe that's a good demonstration of the sort of things we do and how kind of uh, sort of thing that we just um, our spirit of loving getting out in the community and delivering projects and I thought no I'll just I'll let my background be a little bit messy um, but yeah I will share my presentation fantastic okay uh, can you see a, pres a green groundwork uh, presentation yes we've got it fantastic uh, so I'm Molly and I'm the community program manager for um, groundwork London uh, the east team so my job and i'm kind of new in the role is to really support uh and kind of both develop and and oversee the delivery of community projects in east london that are around the central kind of um central aims of the work that we do which is about the environment and community it's about supporting the environment through connecting with communities um and so you'll see some people there doing gardening projects uh, we also do we do a whole different range of projects which I'll be speaking about now but we're also always keen to hear about any ideas you have you may have previously worked with my uh, colleague Claire Norwood who's now uh, moved to another position in groundwork so if you're aware of Claire I'm kind of the new Claire that's how I've been introducing myself which if you knew, know Claire is quite a uh, slightly ominous thing because of how amazing she is to work uh, with but there we are um, so one thing I just want to flag about our services before I mention things is we can accept referrals, but uh, it's kind of good to have a conversation about it. And there may be some participants who have very profound challenges that we may not be able to support. Um, and also, that's but that hopefully that won't be the case. And we'd always look to be able to support them, but we are, might also need to have a discussion. So I'm conscious that might be some people working with some participants who have uh, very profound needs. Um, and there might need to be a discussion around that, but we're also um, just generally always uh, always keen to hear about, hear from you. Um, so just running, I'm just gonna run through our projects that we've got uh, currently uh, up and running. So one of which and our kind of main, one of our main projects is our free range garden. And so that's therapeutic gardening activities followed by, thanks to Hackney Council, um, uh, the, the, a scheme from them, a little bit of funding. We have uh, a free uh, soup lunch, um, which will be, uh, we've got that until the end of January. So that's sort of during that kind of key winter period, but normally it's just gardening, or well, not just gardening, very uh, kind of gardening activities. Some of the people who come know an awful lot about gardening and they kind of take a slightly more leadership role and and it's very much kind of done in in collaboration they'll often mention and suggest things along alongside our community gardeners but also it's it's absolutely fine for people who don't have any experience in gardening um the activities are kind of designed for people who may have health conditions or uh other challenges um and it's something that you, anyone with kind of any level of ability to get in, excuse me can get involved in and as i say that's finished by, uh finished off by lunch that happens every tuesday um, and that's our office in Hackney, um, the Groundwork London East office on Lower Clapton Road. And it is uh, for lo local residents of Hackney and unfortunately not eligible to those who have no recourse to public funds due to restrictions. I think the funding comes from the DWP or but, uh, originally, so that's why that's in place. Um, another thing we have is our Silver Liners programme, which is coming to an end in the next few weeks. Um, uh, but is a really amazing project where we get uh, older people who uh, give their time as volunteers to make amazing gifts. So we've got our slow craft uh, project and you can see some of the slow craft uh, people and their kind of work that they've done. And then you can also see one of our uh, Chippies and Chips members uh, and the, the things that they've created. So you can see the, the, some coasters and also some little bowls. And those gifts are being kind of created and they're there for 
we you know we basically need to find people who want to have those gifts so if you work with any groups who perhaps would appreciate some some presents um and uh, at the end of the year maybe for christmas or maybe not maybe they'd, if they don't celebrate that then it would be kind of great to hear from you perhaps people who wouldn't expect to get many presents um and you know you might appreciate receiving kind of either some crafted objects or some wood crafted up objects we've also got the mobile garden i will say that the program of activities again is coming to an end at the end of this year but we are keen to find funding to continue that but um just to flag that but until the end of this year um it's a grow to share community and training garden there's a weekly program of sessions held on tuesdays thursdays fridays and once a month on a saturday uh, and that's uh, our mobile garden on hackney bridge um and there's sort of there's activities for children and young people kind of family sessions and also sessions for adults so i can share a link later to that in the chat but that's where you can come along again learn, you learn about gardening you don't have to have any knowledge and that will be run by one of our community gardeners we also have a corporate volunteering program where um my amazing colleague ben who i think is pictured there uh, and his uh, really fantastic team will um, come along to a space um, and deliver uh, a day of um, corporate volunteering. So with a corporate group, it could be from Deloitte, KPMG, all of those big companies. Uh, we've had you know, also some construction companies as well. They can come and kind of transform your space. It's free for you and you can make a really big difference to the space with their work. Um, kind of we handle all of the logistics um, and all of the organization the insurance managing the team and you can sort of transform a space with one day of, of amazing work given by these fantastic corporate volunteers uh, we've also got free online resources which you can use for children and young people um, if for example you want to run any environmental uh, education sessions and you'd like just to have a resource pack uh, like you know information on leading sessions that's something that we've got online so that's something on your to-do list and we can take that off if, if you work with children and young people uh, a new project that we're developing is around um, community development in the face of the climate crisis um, so it's something I'm really keen to kind of begin to build up partners because we're looking for funding for this and one of the key, key planks of this program is we are able to deliver uh, accredited training so carbon literacy training which is really great sort of entry level into environmental issues and particularly into things like green jobs uh, and, and what, you know, the point of the training is both to raise a knowledge of climate change but also to uh, kind of encourage people to get into green jobs so if you have a, a cohort of people who would be interested in, in increasing their employability getting more accredited training and also might be interested in working in the environmental sector in some capacity uh, that's something we definitely um be really keen to partner up for funding for uh we wouldn't be able to deliver that without funding at this stage but if you're kind of looking for a pot of money to deliver something and want to bring in that element of green jobs or any other aspect around the communicating around the climate crisis and building community resilience I'm thinking today on a day that's stormy with storm kieran um just being aware of of that that there are people who will be really struggling um and when there's kind of increased extreme weather or increased extreme heat obviously that has an impact on people especially those who who have less recourse and less um capacity uh yes so the other thing is kind of anything else as i said i'm finally new in the role and i we you know we're kind of always keen to connect we've got lots of experience in lots of different areas is it community is it environment get in touch so if you've got something and you think oh i don't know if it's for them get in touch because it probably is um and we do we are looking you know we're, we're an organization that looks for funding for projects but we have an expert fundraising team uh, and we're always really keen to partner up with smaller organizations and to support smaller organizations through those processes so we're kind of uh, really always keen to connect and, and get involved so if you've got anything that you think might be relevant please send it my way uh, these are my details so this is my email and also if you want to book a meeting in with me uh, you can really easily do that via link with this link which i'll put in the chat so yeah that's my that's my presentation 
Um, so thanks very much uh, for kind of uh, listening. I hope I haven't gone over time. Uh, but yeah, happy to, to have any questions as well, if that would be useful. Thanks, Molly. That was, that was brilliant. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions for Molly about any of any of the work the groundwork does? I actually had one about, uh, oh, okay, Claudette, did you want to come in? Sorry, <laughs> could I, um, I'm mute. Yeah, I, I just wanted to know um, how long if you um, refer someone to attend your course, how long, what's the duration of them participating? So for the Free Range Garden, which we have funding mm -hmm. for, that that's just a drop-in course that's just it's not a course or it's just a program it's it's a drop-in for the carbon literacy training mm -hmm. that is um i think it's two days but that's something that we don't run currently we would need to get funding for so we don't mm -hmm. run it at the moment it's just that if for example you were looking because we don't have the funds for it right now to deliver it but um, that's something we're looking to deliver in the future Okay, no, because I work in the job centre, you see, and maybe we can refer some customers, especially, you know, some of them that they've got mental health and want to absolutely improving. Definitely. Know. So, like our free range garden, it's people mm. can drop in, drop out. You know, there's no firm commitment, so it's really great for people who maybe are having a difficult time and don't not able to give that real you know like not able to maybe go to a more kind of formal volunteering pro project where there are you know expectations of coming every week it's very relaxed mm. so that might be something definitely to refer especially with our uh, funding so mm. i can share um i can definitely share our leaflet as well and you can yeah, pass that um also do you sort of do any training to get people to the stage where they can probably get employment out of gardening, being a gardener or something. We have done that in the past. We do have various schemes. I will say right now when our my team, the community team, aren't mm -hmm. running any training. Um it, that kind of that's not where we are right now. Uh but going along to our volunteering projects can really help you um like gain some skills uh and um to gain some sort of skills and there are kind of training programs that we do run at other points in the year would you be able to let us know about those programs absolutely in the job absolutely yeah great thanks claudette um charlie just a quick flag about the benefits of gardening and getting into work i know not groundwork but another organization hackney who did some gardening um someone came regularly and then they got a job as a florist off the back of it amazing so there's always opportunities from that kind of thing yeah i think absolutely um and we're always keen for people to yeah to have those kind of stories it's always really exciting we're able to do that as well amazing a uh, couple of comments in the chat um so basia so thanks for the garden project at sanford port there is still a vacant wheelchair access garden bed if anyone can identify a participant. Um, did you want to explain a bit more about that, Batia? If we've still got you. Yeah, I'm still here. Great. Um, well, Groundworks um, did this walled garden for us. It was brilliant. But they did one wheelchair bed and we don't have at the moment anybody who's identified as needing a wheelchair bed. So I'm I'm sort of looking towards spring and saying, look, can we find someone who can use this specially built garden bed, um, you know, to keep the project fully occupied? Okay. Um, if anyone has any ideas, then um, feel free to come forward or get in touch with Batia. Um, uh, I think that's his email is in the chat. So, um, yeah, obviously feel free to get in touch. Um, just looking through the comments. Um, I think they were the only questions, but um, thanks, uh, Naina, for your link. I'll share that in the newsletter if that's all right. Uh, I think that's the only 
questions? Does anyone else have any questions for Molly? I was actually going to ask about, um, do you guys go into schools much? I'm, I'm assuming you must do work with young people and children, or is that a sort of untapped area as yet? That is, so something we've done historically, I think we haven't done it post COVID, but it's something we're right. definitely keen to get back involved in. Um, I'm having conversations. Yeah, we're always keen to that kind of de develop that kind of work. Um, again, we would really need to either look for funding or to, yeah. for that to be paid. Um, so, but definitely really, really keen to have conversations um, yeah. around those yeah. things. Cool. Um, any other questions for Molly before we move on? No. Okay, great. Um, that's fantastic. Thanks, Molly, so much for coming along. And I'll, uh, if you if you're able to just send me or Alvini your slides, I can um, send them out in the newsletter as well. Um, but that was brilliant. Thank you. Um, so we've concluded our presentation. So now we tend to just open up the floor really for anyone to um, ask a question or make a suggestion for a future meeting or just to share something that you've been working on or to give a quick shout out to something that you're offering. Um, Batia, do you want to come in? Um, I just wanted to make everyone aware if you're doing advice work or dealing with people um, wanting to sign up to this new community fibre, which is the one that Hackney Council is promoting to all its residents. Um, I was negotiating with them on behalf of uh, one of our service users, and they have a benefits tariff, but they do not advertise it at all anywhere. You have to know about it, and you have to when you ring up, you have to say, I want the benefits tariff. And that will typically save a resident uh, five or 10 pounds a month on their broadband. And I, I think I just want to get the word out there. I'm very angry with them for withholding that information and to Hackney Council for promoting them without making sure that they did have a benefits tariff for those that need it. Thanks, Bessie. Yeah, that's good to know. If you're able to, um, maybe I can have a, have a look into that, or one of my, one me or one of my colleagues can have a look into that. Maybe that the council just wasn't aware. But um, if you want to email me about that, maybe I can um, have a look. Because uh, yeah, obviously people should be being made aware of the best possible deal. So um, happy to try and find out what's happened there. Um, anyone else want to come in? And anyone, anyone else got a? Uh, burning question that they uh, want to put to the group or any ideas for me or people you'd really like me to get to come along to a future meeting um happy to sort of uh, make requests and things like that um or we can wrap up. oh titula i didn't want to come in yeah um i have a question i don't know if there's anyone on the um uh, on here who can help i i have a client who is from poland He's been living in the UK for 20 years and he's trying to do his settlement. So he, he wants to know if there are um, charitable organisations who can help, who can give him advice. Um, yeah, because it's not my remit, but I wanted to put it out there. If someone has any idea of um, any organisation that can help, especially since Brexit, I have no um, idea how things work. Uh, Naina suggested Hackney Law Centre to fly out. Okay, if you've okay. looked at these guys, yeah. Um, but that probably that sounds like a, a good option. Okay, thank you. And there, there's the link there in the chat as well. Thanks, Naina. Um, okay. Charlie suggested Praxis. I don't know if you've heard of them. No, okay. Um, let me dig out a link for you. Okay, thank you. But yeah, they're two really good suggestions. Um, oh, great, thanks, Charlie. Uh, and Hops of Trust as well. Oh, okay. As I was said, so yeah, you've got a few few ideas to uh, go on there. Thanks, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Great, thanks all. Um, any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Come in. 
Yeah, we have one of our volunteers. Uh, she's looking a place in Lower Center or a solicitor office for work experience. I don't know if you can help us with that. You mean she just means someone who's actually looking for an opportunity? Yeah, for work yeah. experience. Yeah. yeah, she's in year ten. Yeah. Okay. Um. I mean, yeah, I would probably. I, I don't really. I don't know. I'm sorry. Maybe someone else knows more than me. But um, I think people are usually fairly open and welcoming to having you know young people come along and do work experience um I would, I, I would honestly suggest just approaching people directly i mean even if they haven't got like a specific work experience or internship program yeah. I, I think people generally um are sort of <laughs> quite pro you know um yeah. giving people that experience especially you know it probably helps them as well with their sort of capacity but um does anyone else on the call know of any like specific work experience programs that exist in the borough for that sort of thing i'm not aware of any of it. it's not i'm not aware of any but it's not really my um expertise to be honest in low place or low center yeah. place or any solicitor office yeah let us know yeah um if you uh maybe if you put your have you got an email address, guys, that you can yeah. put in the chat for everyone? Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. you. Send, send, or you can send it to me, um, your yeah. email address, and then I can, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, oh. thank you. And then, you Jen you, you guys, sorry, you can, you can link up with Volunteer Centre Hackney, because mm. I know that, we, you know, we have contacts um, in, in the law sphere. So, you know, maybe you could link up with the organisations that way. But it, as John said, I think it's about approaching those organisations individually. But yeah. we'd certainly be able to share the contacts with you. Yeah. OK. Yeah, I was just going to add that the website says to contact the Volunteer Centre. <laughs> but there may be some that are available through the council on the link I put in there. Great. Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, maybe if you guys get in touch with Volunteer Centre Hackney, Joe, would yeah. you be able to pass on the, the sort of the right link or email address and then maybe yeah. address, yeah. for those individual organisations and go from there? Hi I'll... there, it's Nina from Hackney Adult Education. Hi, Nina. Um, Lutimba Mimi, was it you who asked the question? Yes. Hi. What? How old is this person? 15. Okay, so if you look at the phone number for Spark Change, that yeah. is the Young People's Career Service for Hackney. Yeah. And they might be able to find a placement for the student. Uh, are they in a school at the moment? Yes. Yeah, which school? Our Ladies Catholic School. Yeah, contact that oh, okay. number. Because that's the Young young People's Career Service. Yeah. And they might be able to help. Okay, thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, everyone. Um, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to find something. Um, mm. Anyone else have any questions or anything they want to raise? Any ideas before we wrap up? No. OK, um, we'll we'll end it there then. Um, but yeah, thanks, everyone, always for coming along. Um, uh, yeah, thanks, Joe, um, Molly, who's uh, not on the call anymore for the presentations um and yeah hopefully see you in a couple of weeks and if anyone wants to present at the meeting uh at future one we're always on the lookout for new people so please get in touch with me and elvina uh, and we can find a date for you all right great thanks a lot guys bye-bye thank you, thank thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.